Hi everybody, welcome to the Bible Summary Series. Today, we're starting in Genesis chapter 33. Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming towards him with four hundred men. He quickly divided his children and wives into three groups. He placed the handmaids Zilpah and Bilhah with their children in the front, Leah with her children in the middle, and Rachel with Joseph at the very back. Then Jacob crossed over the stream and bowed down to the ground seven times until he reached his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, hugged him, threw his arms around his neck, and the two brothers wept for joy. Then Esau looked up at the woman and children and asked, Who are these people with you? Jacob replied, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. The handmaids came close with their children and bowed down. Then Leah came with her children and bowed. And finally, Rachel and Joseph bowed down as well. What do you mean by all these flocks I've met? Esau asked. They are to find favor in your eyes, Jacob replied. Ah, I have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have, Esau said. No, please, Jacob insisted. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my gifts. For seeing your face is like seeing the face of God, and you've accepted me. So please take them. God has been gracious to me. I have more than enough. So Jacob kept insisting, and finally Esau accepted his gifts. Then Esau said, Let's travel together and I'll lead the way. But Jacob said, My Lord knows that the children are young and frail, and the flocks and herds have young. If they're driven too hard for even one day, all the animals will die. So please, go ahead without your servant, and I'll follow slowly until I meet you at Seir. Well, at least let me leave some of my men with you to lead you, Esau suggested. That's not necessary, Jacob said. It's enough that I found favor in your sight, my lord. So Esau turned around at last and headed back to his home seer, while Jacob traveled on to Succoth. When he arrived, he built a house and made shelters for his livestock. That's why they named the place Succoth, which means shelters. Later, after traveling all the way from Paddan Adam, Jacob finally arrived safely at the town of Shechem in the land of Canaan. He set up camp in front of the walled city, and then he bought a piece of land from the family of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of silver. There he built an altar and called it El Elohe Israel. In Genesis chapter 34, Dinah, the daughter of Leah and Jacob, went out to see the young woman who lived in the area. But when the local prince, Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, saw her, he kidnapped her and forced Dinah to lie with him. But afterward, his soul clung to her. He fell in love with her, and he tried to win her affection with comforting words. Shechem then said to his father, Get me this young woman as a wife. Soon Jacob heard that Shechem had dishonored his daughter Dinah. But his sons were in the field with the livestock, so Jacob said nothing until they arrived. In the meantime, Shechem's father, Hamor, went to Jacob and talked with him. Soon Jacob's sons came in from the field. But when they heard about what had happened, they were shocked and angry and furious, for Shechem had done a disgraceful thing to Israel's family by forcing Jacob's daughter, a thing that should never be done. But Hamor tried to appease them by saying, My son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife and intermarry with us. You may marry our daughters, and we will marry yours. Live here in the land with us, for it is open to you. Stay, trade, and acquire property. Then young Shechem said to Dinah's brothers, Please be kind to me, and let me marry her, he pleaded, and I'll give you whatever you ask. Make the bride price as high as you like, and I'll pay whatever you tell me. Just give me the girl to be my wife. However, Dinah's brothers answered Shechem and Hamor deceitfully because of what Shechem had done to their sister. They said to them, We can't do this. We can't give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace. We will only agree on one condition, that you become like us by circumcising all of your males. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters for ourselves, and we will live with you and become one people. But if you do not listen and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and leave. 
Hamor and Shechem agreed to the conditions, and the young man didn't hesitate because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. Now Shechem was more honored and respected than all the other members in his father's household. So Hamor and Shechem went to the city gate and spoke to the leaders of the city, saying, These men are peaceful and friendly. We should let them live in the land and trade in it, for the land is large enough for the both of us. Let us take their daughters as wives and give our daughters to them. But they'll only do this on one condition, if every male here is circumcised as they are. And if we do this, won't their livestock and possessions eventually be ours? So come, let's agree to their terms and let them live here among us. So all the leading men agreed with Hamor and Shechem, and every male in the city was circumcised. But on the third day, when all the men were still sore and in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's full-blooded brothers, took their swords, boldly entered the city, and killed every last male. They killed Hamor and Shechem with the sword, took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and left. Then Jacob's other sons arrived and plundered the city, because their sister had been defiled. They seized the flocks, the herds, the donkeys, and everything in the city and in the fields. They plundered the houses and took all of the children, the wives, and led them away as captives. Afterwards, Jacob yelled at Simeon and Levi in a panic, You have ruined me! You have made me stink among all the people of this land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. My numbers are few, and if they gather themselves against me and attack, I will be destroyed, both me and my household. But they retorted angrily, should we allow him to treat our sister like a prostitute?